It's a big pleasure to have you here with Yofunam. It's an honor for me to work with you. I've always been a big fan of your music, of your work. I have all your CDs, uh, the collection of Kurt Weill, <laughs> the cabaret songs, and uh, it's an, an honor for us to have you here. Oh, Welcome. thank you, thank you. It's a long road. But when, when did you first get my CDs? Oof. 1998, I think it was yeah. the first one I bought. Okay. And Entire court file. Yeah, yeah. We recorded that in 1987, believe it. 35 wow. years ago. Fantastic. In London. It's a long, long road of uh, singing this music. So what's music for you now? After all those years performing this wonderful repertoire? This music? Yes. Well, I, I, it's, it's classic repertoire. It's eternal. It, um, it is a repertoire written in a time that um, for a while was forgotten. And my mission was, at the end of the 80s, to record this music and to revive it, to bring it back to life, to bring it back into the world. Because people, you know, it was Germany, Hitler, the Second World War, it was a Nazi time, it was a terrible time, the whole Holocaust. And so the Weimar time, which was so incredibly progressive and fruitful, was forgotten in the middle of the terror that the German inflicted into, into the world. So when I first re-recorded these albums at the end of the 80s, it was amazing. So at the end of the 80s, it was an incredible mission that I had as a young German to bring this music back to the world. Yes. And I didn't expect, you know, most of it was in German at the time. The first album had 80% of German. And I thought, oh my God, this album, maybe the Germans are interested, but no, no one in the world wants to hear it. But it was amazing because through this album, they studied history again. It was the catal catalysator to start to rediscover the, the music and the, and the incredible culture of the Weimar Republic. And it was uh, at the time for me a big responsibility to speak as a young German about the pre-Nazi time, to represent this German culture from a different time, but also to speak out as a young German about the country the way it was at the time. And it was still the Cold War. Yes. We yes. still had a war. Yes. So now, 35 years later, the world has changed and everything has changed. The balance has changed. And I would say um, it still is a treasure. And in the middle of the music, what is composed today, it's still a unique voice from history. A very pro And now, 100 years later, we are hundred, it, was, it was written in 1920, whatever, Absolutely. you know, yes. and we are a hundred years later. I still think this music has so much intellect, especially the Bertolt Brecht, oh, yes. so oh, much yes. intellect, so much uh, political awareness and uh, um, human rights, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of sexuality, all of that is still an issue. So I still feel that today this repertoire is very special. It won't be played on the radios, but people who come still will take a great message with it. And we have different uh, portals. I mean, they have the radio, but now we have the concert halls, the internet. Uh, we have a lot of platforms, but this music is still the message of the music. Uh, it speaks through the people today as well, as it did uh, 100 years ago. And the lyrics and the text and the importance of the message of this music is to unite us and to to find uh, a way through music to express our emotions. How is that for you now, after these very hard years, the pandemic we had? Well, first of all, I think Bertolt Brecht was a man of the theater. He was a poet, a thinker, but a man of the theater. So it will, it's hard for the social platforms like YouTube or you know, uh, the modern ear is not trained to even understand this music. Right. So it's hard to bring it to the younger people unless they have a special interest in this music. So it will always stay the best and the most authentic in a theatrical situation. Performed life, the human being speaks the word, thinks the word, and brings it to the people and invites the people to come along and think, think with them. So um, 
Well, after the, the pandemic was a crazy time. Hmm. Uh, you know, honestly, for me personally, I thought it was a very interesting experiment to stop everything. I've been performing for 40 years without stopping. And I've always had a terrible struggle to organize my personal life with my family, my children, and my stage life. It was always a credible sacrifice on both sides. And here, there was, I had no choice. I had to stay home. And I have to tell you, my children flew in from wherever they lived, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, and I have four children. We all were together, the six of us, and we, the little ones too, and we, and we just enjoyed the time together. You know, it, it was, I was paranoia, it was difficult. I thought, you know, this is not the end of my career yet. No, not yet. It's interesting toying with it, an interesting adventure to feel how it would be to not perform. But I knew it would continue. And I thought the hardest thing was to keep trained, you know, to stay trained with the instrument, to stay like, like if tomorrow I would have to perform, I have to be ready. And not to just like let everything go mm -hmm. and just do other things. I have many other interests. I love sports, I love painting, I love reading, I love writing. But I have to keep training, you know, the, the, the performance aspect of this. So I thought it was a little bit uh, par neur neurotic to, to keep uh, in shape and yet to do something completely different. How did you feel? Well, it was a difficult time, but I loved being home with my family. Yeah. And I think our lives, uh, your life, of course, is so amazing because you get to travel through the entire world performing, doing what you love but also being with the loved ones and with the family is something I think we need to cherish now, yes, yes. you see? And uh, pandemic brought us that opportunity to it be It did, and it, and it changed our yes. perspective. Yes. I definitely uh, will make different choices now. And a lot of people uh, understand, you know, that, you know, we, we are privileged. We can make music. We love our work. Totally. Our work is our life. Totally. But many people just work because they have to work to, to earn money, to support the family and to live. And, and they're disconnected, disconnected from their work. Yeah. They don't like it. They have to. So now they see, uh, you know, they got some, you know, insurance money and so and so, uh, home, uh, you know, workers' compensation. So, you know, this disconnection makes the work even look more senseless to them. Mm -hmm. And it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And I think it changed the world, the whole attitude towards working and uh, the, uh, the priorities of life. You know, what I'm here on this world, in this, on this earth, I have a, f a few decades to live and I want to make the best out of it, you know. And everyone rethought this and made choices towards really making quality of life, quality of time and not wasting time with anything senseless. Do you think what we do, what you do on stage, uh, has a different impact now than it had like two years ago before the pandemics? Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not, no, not not really. I'm, mm -hmm. I definitely think that this repertoire speaks to the modern society. Mm -hmm. To the uh, you know, I mean, Brecht always was a great c critique of the modern progressive. Uh, econo economy and the capitalism and the companies, the corporations, uh, and the global uh, structures, and you know the way uh, the the market took over to be the god of societies. Brecht knew it a hundred years ago. He knew it, and yes. as as soon as they're people, they strive for power, economic power, influence, manipulation, and um, and. The, the, the human independence, the freedom the, of the singular individual is restricted. And he knew it so long ago. And, uh, you know, so I, I think in the world we live in today is exactly what Brecht, you know, imagined it to be 100 years ago. And um, so I think it had, to, the pandemic didn't really change it that much. Uh, I don't think so. But, but you know, there's, uh, I, I just love the French songs. Mm -hmm. um, also, they are so uh, connected to the human soul. Yes. And they're so, in, the, the, the French are so uh, very special. They are very special treasure of music. And for me as a singer to interpret that, it, it's, it's almost like um, 
more than just a song. It's really a platform to celebrate um, spirituality because they are so deep and so connected to the, uh, the existentialism, the French existentialism. And that's a very wonderful thing to, and people understand, you know, it makes everyone like oh, open their heart and you get connected to this universal pain and love. And then there is Astro Piazzolla, we can't absolutely, forget. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a lovely program. It has a lot of colors, a lot of different emotions, different feelings. And uh, of course, you're a wonderful singer, but I always say defining you as a singer is saying too little about you because you're a wonderful artist. You, you perform, you're an actress, you can be, uh, you, you're in touch uh, with your emotions, with your emotions to, to make us feel a lot. And you've been here before in Mexico, but not in this hall and with this orchestra. How's your connection with Mexico? What's your connection with Mexico? But well, first of all, I have to say, you did such a great job. Thank you were you. a wonderful conductor. Thank the you so way much. you prepared the orchestra. I, I don't have to do anything. I just come and sing, and everything, every, every accelerando and rallentando is prepared. I can live free. You know, that's that for me. It's a big challenge to sing with a enormous organism of an orchestra. You know, I have to almost like jump into their world, but, but you prepared them so I can actually have my freedom on top of it. So thank you very much mm, for that. You. And they sound amazing, the orchestra sounds amazing. Well, Mexico, I've been here for many, many years. And Orly Bagel, my uh, you know, presenter here, she has been, she brought me here in the 90s mm -hmm. for the first time. And we have a special connection because her mother is a survivor of the Holocaust and she never wanted to work with a German artist and she said, Uta, I want to work with you because you sing the Jewish composers. Yes. So the whole thing is, our collaboration is based on a very deep emotional connection and also on, 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 on a painful recognition of the history. And uh, so she's been basically creating my, <laughs> my career here with mm. all different programs and with the Seven Deadly Sins is a great piece of music. Yes. I'd love to do this oh, with you. Oh, let's do it. Oh, but that, that's, <laughs> you will be, oh, it will be amazing let's to do the Seven Deadly Sins. Let's do it, I would love to yeah. do that with yeah. you. Yeah. And, um, and the cabaret songs, and you know, Orly wants me to do mostly the German repertoire, but I, I also want to bring, uh, there's so many, you know, there's the Pablo Neruda song cycle, the Paolo Coelho, there's the Charles Bukowski. I do some more like uh, outcast, crazy wor work. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's wonderful to be here and to see that, um, you know, this, uh, this place is a very old place to Mexico City. Uh, Mexico and Mexico City especially has like, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, they're a bit like a New York. It has a big immigration uh, um, and uh, these immigrants came from Europe, they came from South America, they came from everywhere. And so there is a, uh, it's a mosaic of stories of people and their inheritance. And um, then I feel always like, okay, you know, uh, it's harder for me to come into a small enclosed country that doesn't know the culture from where I come from, but I feel like there is so much um, opening from the historical uh, context, but also, you know, the contemporary culture, of course, is, is more global. So I, it's, I love it and it's very passionate, of course. It's a Latin American culture. There is just a lot of blood flowing and, and passion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We're so glad and so excited to have you here. It's an honor and I think we will enjoy a lot these concerts. And uh, it's uh, for me, it's very special. And I'm honored to make music with uh, you and share the stage with you. Oh, thank and you. thank you so much for yeah. this interview with us. Thank you, Fuidam, and thank you. <laughs> the organization and thank you. Thank the thank orchestra. Check. <laughs>